Okay, combination circuit number two. Four resistors, resistor one, 100 ohms, resistor two, 200 ohms, resistor three, three uh, 700 ohms, resistor four is 200 ohms. We can see very clearly that resistor two and resistor three are in parallel with each other. So when determining our total resistance, we need to do that first. So my total resistance equation is gonna look like this. My total resistance is equal to R2 being in parallel with R3. So I know that I have to do that first. And if I was to do that first, I'd get a value. Uh, so I'd have to go, well, 200 and then do the reciprocal, 1 over x. Uh, and in parallel with 700, I should, you should come out to uh, 155.55 ohms there. And then if we said, well, those two resistors have an equivalent value of 155 ohms, I could just say it's just one value of resistance that's in series with these other two values of resistance. So I could just take that equivalent value and add it on to what I currently have. So R plus R1 plus R4 on the bottom. So if I add those in, I got R1 is 100 ohms and 200 ohms there you will end up with 455.55 ohms. So we can write that up over here. Four hundred and fifty five point five ohms. So now we've got our total resistance, we can find our total current. So according to my Ohm's Law triangle over here, so my current is equal to my voltage divided by my resistance. So my IT is going to be equal to my ET over my RT. And my ET in this case is 100 volts. My RT we've just determined is 455.55 ohms. So it should have a total current of 0.2195 amps. Base unit volts, base unit uh, in ohms. Because it's under an amp, we want to use the next value of uh, notation, or engineering notation, milli, which is 10 to the negative 3. So it means I'm going to move this decimal three places to the right. One, two, three. So I'm going to end up with 219.5 milliamps. Milliamps. 219.5. Now let's take a look what's going on here. So all the current is leaving my power supply here and it's going through this resistor. And then once it's passed through that resistor, it splits at this point. Some of it goes there and some of it goes there. And then whatever is going there goes through there, comes back over here. Whatever is going through there, comes back, goes through there, adds up with this one. So it splits up over here and it recombines down over here. So this is one path for the current to flow. This is one path home for the current to flow. So this value of amperage must equal my total, or 219.5, and as well. So path in for current, path out for current. Now that we have our current through here, 219.5 milliamps, we have current here. Now we can find our voltage drop at 1. So let's take a look. Our voltage drop, E1, according to my Ohm's Law triangle, is I1 times R1. And the current, 0.2195 milliamps, we're going to put that back to its base unit, which is 2.2195 amps, times my resistance of 100 ohms. And so if I did that, I should get 21.95 volts. And we can do the same thing with E4, where E4 equals I4 times R4. And my 4 is the same, 0.2195 amps. And my resistance has doubled, so it's 200 ohms now. So doing that, you should have come to 43.9 volts. So you can write that down here, 43.9 volts. So I started over here with 100 volts. And if I had my meter out and I 
was to put my meter across from here to here across my power supply, it'd obviously get 100 volts. Now, if I left this one here, and I took this one and I moved it across this load over here, I would experience a voltage drop of 21.95 volts. So 100 minus 21.95. So it makes sense. It stands to reason if I move this lead from there over to here. So now I've got one lead here and one lead over here. I'm going to have a voltage drop of 21.95 plus 43.9. So we can express that algebraically. We can say that, well, my voltage at 2, this one over here, and really my voltage at 3, because they're parallel with each other, are going to be equal to my total voltage that I started with, 100 volts, minus my voltage drop at 1, minus my voltage drop at 4. So 100 minus 21.95 minus 43.9 leaves you with 30. 4.15 volts and because these are parallel they're going to be the same so that's easy so now that i have my 34.15 volts here and here i can find out how much current is going through this resistor here because it splits here i've got 219.5 milliamps and it splits some goes down here and some goes that way so let's find out how much goes here first so let's take a look at my I2, according to my Ohm's Law triangle, says that my current is going to be equal to my voltage at that resistor divided by the resistance of that resistor. And my voltage we just determined to be 34.15 volts divided by 200 ohms of resistance gives me a total current of 0 .175, 0 .17, sorry, 0.1705 of an amp. So again, below an amp, so we're going to use engineering notation milliamps. We're going to move that decimal three places to the right. So I'm going to have 170.75 milliamps. Now at this point here, we said, well, we had 219 milliamps. And 170.75 I've gone this way. So where the rest of it go? It must have gone down I3. So we could say that the current in I3 equals the total current minus my current going through 2. So my total current is 219.5 milliamps. And I have 170 of that going down through resistor 2. So if I'm just to do that basic math there, you should have come out to about 48.78 48 milliamps. So we're saying that this is 48.78 milliamps. And the reason that we did it that way is so you can understand that the total uh, divisions of current must equal the total current in the circuit. So if the, I have 219.5 milliamps coming into a node and it splits, when it comes through, when it goes through that circuit and comes back out that node, it must equal what's going into it. Kirchhoff's current law. Now, if you're more comfortable with thinking of it in terms of just, you know, basic Ohm's law math, you can do this again and say, well, my amperage at 3 is equal to my voltage of 3 divided by my resistance of 3. So just like we did with current through 2. And my voltage at 3 is the same. 34.15 uh, volts because it's parallel divided by my resistance uh, which is 700 ohms you will come out to 0 0.04878 and that is amps so we're going to move that to milliamps so three to the right one two three so 47.8 milliamps so that makes sense Now all we have left to do is get our total powers. So our power, according to Ohm's Law Triangle, power total equals my E total times my I total. And my E total is 100 volts. My I total is 0.2195 amps. 
Don't multiply the 100 volts times 21.95 milliamps or uh, 219.5 milliamps rather. Multiply it by your base unit, which is 0.2195. So having done that, you should have come out to 21.95 and that's in watts. Same thing over here. I'm going to take P1 is equal to E1 times I1. And E1 in this case is 21.95. I1 is 0.2195. So you come out here. So P1, you should come out with a value of 4.82 watts. And we can do P2. P2 is E2 times I2. I2 is 170.75 milliamps, but we have to multiply it by 0.17075. Right, times my voltage of 34.15. So if you do that, you should have come up to 5.83 watts. And this one here, so remember 48.78 milliamps is 0 0.04878. Moving that decimal back three places to get it to base unit. Times my voltage here of 34.15. And that's going to give me a power of 1.67 watts. And then lastly, we've got a P4, and P4 is equal to E4 times I4, and your E4 is 43.9 volts, and your I4 is 0.2195 amps. So you should have come to, P4 should be 9.63 watts. So if we take a look, we've got 9.63 watts here, we add that to 1.67 over here, we add that to 5.83 watts there, and we add 4.82 watts there, we should come to a power total. So the individual power dissipations in a circuit equals the total applied. Hope this helps.